Yeah, Michael, I think it's important to, to, to think a little bit about how, uh, how the economy has been affected by COVID. Um, you know, uh, the, the service sector has been affected much more uh, than other areas of, of our portfolio. So when you think of travel, leisure, restaurants, uh, and, and, and those types of things, they were hit pretty hard. And I think what's important there is uh, the average uh, worker there is, is a below average wage in that space. So uh, when you look at economies that, uh, and communities that are predominantly based on those types of uh, areas, uh, they've been hit a little bit harder. Uh, but PPP and a lot of the programs to provide liquidity, uh, in addition to forbearance and so forth, have really actually had a very positive short-term impact on, on those companies. Uh, as we begin, uh, as you know, I may, you may know I'm on the governor's uh, New York Forward uh, uh, reintroduction uh, campaign. And um, uh, essentially, uh, uh, as the businesses have been opening up, we've been seeing uh, inc increased payments around uh, debit card use and credit card use. So things are moving back slowly. You're particularly exposed, Renee, to, to the New York area. How much harder do you think you've been hit than, than other regional banks? Because New York, New Jersey, Connecticut have obviously been hit harder than the rest of the country on the virus. Yeah, I think a couple of things are really important there, Sarah. Um, you have to distinguish between where the virus has had its biggest impact and what the makeup of the economy is in a particular area. So in our footprint, some areas have actually had a, a, a bigger impact, like Western New York, uh, from, from, the, uh, uh, from the shutdown uh, than you actually got because of the makeup of the economy. Um, having said that, you know, at, at m and I mean, we're very fortunate to be, uh, uh, you know, have low exposure to some of the areas that have been hit hardest. So uh, some of the service areas that I mentioned are, are, are a low proportion of our portfolio. Uh, we don't have oil and gas. We don't have airlines. We don't have a lot of travel and leisure. And so, uh, and as, as well, we don't have a lot of mall-based retail. So we've been very fortunate there. We are looking at hospitality and, and staying very close to uh, our, our uh, healthcare clients. Uh, but on the whole, I think the way we're, we're structured and, and underwritten uh, gives us a lot of confidence that our clients have a fair amount of wherewithal uh, to get through the storm. Yeah, certainly M&T always, uh, you know, been viewed as a, as a pretty well-run, um, prudently run bank as well. I mean, how are you thinking about industry structure right now, consolidation? Uh, is this the time to think about that with valuations where they are? And, and do you think it would, would behoove you uh, to become part of a bigger organization at this point? You know, Michael, I, I'd say, look, we're in the, in the early stages of, 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 of this crisis, and we have more uncertainty than we have knowns. And, uh, you know, that's a lot of what you, I think you're seeing in the market with the volatility. And as we get further into the process towards the end of the year, I think we'll, we'll know more and we'll be better positioned. Uh, but historically, yeah, yes, um, you know, M&T has been healthy, conservative, and it's created opportunities uh, in the, uh, for us really post uh, downturns. Uh, and so I think at this point in time, it's probably too early to say. I also wanted to ask you, um, Renee, about what's going on in the country, obviously, the, the continued protests against social injustice. I know that, that you have your own personal story here to tell uh, as an African-American CEO and also can help offer some solutions to what you think corporate America should be doing right now beyond all of the words of support. Sure, Sarah. Thanks, thanks, for, thanks for asking. Um, so I grew up in a, in a mixed family my father uh, uh, was African-American. He grew up in uh, uh, Wolfstown, Virginia, and he was the youngest of 13 kids and joined uh, the U.S. military in 1941. Uh, and during the campaign, he met my mother in Belgium. Uh, and they had uh, six kids, and we pretty much cover every spectrum of the, of the rainbow. Uh, and if you think about it, back then, the Army was still segregated uh, until 1948. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, part of that change of the segregation of the Army came from protests. So we grew up, our, my oldest sister was born in 1946, I was born in 1964, and that time, uh, you know, sort of shapes your perspective on, on things. Uh, when I came to M&T, um, I was really fortunate to be part of an institution that really understood what its purpose and its mission was. 
And that was to essentially be part of the glue that binds a community together. And we sort of believed uh, that 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 role with the churches and the not-for-profits and, and the corporations and municipalities working together was the key to a healthy, uh, healthy um, community. But what's really, really frustrating about uh, uh, the Floyd situation and the other events that have happened recently is that it's just frustrating because the pattern just continues. And when I think about it, really what's happening in these events is we're breaking down the social fabric that sort of binds our communities together and, is, and, and essentially that social fabric is what you need to be healthy. Uh, I've talked about it before. My sense is that there's just really been a lack of compassion, a lack of compassion by the people involved in the incidents, a lack of compassion by people who are standing by not doing anything. And when it comes down to the social contract, the basic issues of I will not harm my neighbor, right, are really fundamental. And I, I believe that social uh, contract, we're watching that social contract get broken. And really the only way to bring it back is to build relationships and have uh, sustainable change. If you're, if you're focused on transaction and, event, and events and trying to do one more thing, it's really not going to get at the s systemic changes that, you need, that need to be addressed. Well, I uh, really appreciate you bringing your uh, very unique perspective on that, Renee, and hopefully a lot of urgency finally being directed at a lot of these issues. And uh, we'll see if some of that can bring about uh, the change you talk about. Uh, Renee, uh, thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me on.